Hello again, this is Dr. Kevin Connors. This is part four of our uh, Beating Chronic Lyme series of just an introduction to Lyme disease. Hopefully you've been following along. You've found out that what acute stage Lyme is and how to treat that and that it only is in a window of opportunity to deal with it. Chronic stage Lyme is a window as well. I didn't talk about that, but it is a window as well. But some people can be in that window for their whole life in the chronic stage where um, you can ex successfully knock it down and treat it with different immune stimulants. So uh, this isn't a complete uh, dissertation on an autoimmune disease, obviously, but you're going to get a uh, earful today. Uh, but all these things are Th1 stimulants that we're going to talk about. So the third stage of chronic Lyme disease, then what we mainly see in our office, is in the autoimmune stage. So this phase three, or autoimmune phase of chronic Lyme disease, is the most debilitating. So uh, here's some uh, pictures that can that we can spend some time on. So. Uh, an autoimmune disease is, is a disease that where your immune system attacks your self tissue, and we're going to explain that in detail. But it's really named after the main body part that brought that person in the office. So the person goes into their doctor with thyroid symptoms, and the and the doctor runs uh, a complete thyroid panel and finds out that they have hypothyroid. But the doctor was, uh, was a great doctor, and he also ran antibody tests on that patient to see if they were actually making antibodies against their own thyroid gland. And sure enough, they have thyroid antibodies in their blood. So that means their, their immune system, specifically their Th2 side of their immune system, is creating antibodies against their thyroid gland. So then the patient is if they have hypothyroid and antibodies to their thyroid gland, they are given a label called Hashimoto's disease. Hashimoto's disease is, by definition, an autoimmune hypothyroid condition. So then the patient goes, oh, well, what does that mean? And the doctor will typically, almost always, say, we don't know how it starts. Here's your Synthroid. Start taking that. Well, what good was it for the person to know they have Hashimoto's disease, an autoimmune attack on their thyroid, versus know, knowing that they just are believing that they just had a hypothyroid because there's multiple different types of low thyroid, is what we're discussing here right now, and uh, only one of them is a Hashimoto's. So you're developing, an, you have developed antibodies against your thyroid. Well, in the medical world, there really is no benefit because they don't treat it. They don't treat Hashimoto's any different than they treat hypothyroid. Matter of fact, if you ask most um, doctors what's the difference between Hashimoto's hypothyroid and th hypothyroid, they'd say, well, really nothing from a treatment perspective because they don't do anything different. You're still just given thyroid medication. Well, that is not adequate for us. So what is our motto? What has always been my motto in my clinic? Never stop asking why. So why do I have Hashimoto's? Unfortunately, if you ask even the greatest endocrinologist, why do I have Hashimoto's? They will most likely say it is an idiopathic disease, which is Latin for we don't know. That's really what it's Latin for. Maybe you could say it's Latin for I'm an idiot, don't ask me any more questions. So uh, an autoimmune disease is named after the main tissue of destruction where you've created antibodies. However, it doesn't tell us why you created antibodies against that disease. There's a reason in Hashimoto's that you have created antibodies against your thyroid. And you don't want to know what the reason is? The only reason that your body would create antibodies against your own tissue, regardless of whether it's your thyroid tissue, whether it's your uh, motor neurons in MS, the myelin sheath of the motor neurons, whether it's the neurons in ALS, whether it's the joint capsules in rheumatoid arthritis, whether it's the, the, um, 
the fatty layer of the skin in a psoriasis, whether it's the skin layer in rosacea, whether it's whatever the named autoimmune system is. The autoimmune disease is named after the tissue of greatest destruction. Where you have antibodies created against that tissue, there was always, 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 always an, uh, an antigen in or near that tissue that created this immune response. So I have to explain this to you. So and this is, this is uh, immunology 101, all right? You have two major sides of your immune response. You have your Th1 response and your Th2 response. Your Th1 response is your killer cells. They are the they are the Marine Corps, okay? They're the Marine Corps with machine guns ready to kill whatever it's supposed to do. They are just biting at the bullet, looking for something to kill. Now, normally they're in balance, and normally they're not firing very high. But your body is making cancer cells on a daily basis. Your body is exposed to virus and bacteria on a daily basis. You can't eat food, you can't breathe in our environment and not be exposed to some pathogen. So you need a healthy immune response. That is a healthy Th1 response. So normally you're in this balance, but Every day you have this little blip, you could say, of a Th1 response, and it kills off that virus, and it goes back into balance. And then it blips up again and kills off that virus, and it goes back into balance. And it blips up and kills off that bacteria. Oh, and it blips up and kills that little cancer cell that's growing in your liver, so now that's gone. It blips up and kills this and that. That is a normal, healthy immune response. That's not an autoimmune disease yet. That's an immune response. So normally there's a balance, and the Th1 fires initially. That's your initial response to kill any pathogen. Got it? Super important. What's in that Th1 response, in that Th2 response? Well, the Th1 response contains a whole bunch of different cytokines and chemokines and white blood cells and macrophages and, the, the, and killer cells, different types to kill different things. So they are circulating through your blood looking for enemies. The Th2 response is different. It contains different cytokines and different chemokines, but the main purpose of this Th2 or B cell response is to make antibodies. So where the Th1 response is to kill things, the Th2 response is to make antibodies. So if you could think of it in a cartoon-type format, the Th1 response are the machine gun touting Marine Corps. The Th1 response is the machine gun touting Marine Corps. The Th2 response is the FBI, the spies, the behind the scenes. We're looking for the enemy. We're going to go in covertly, look for the enemy, and we're going to tag it with antibodies. We're going to make antibodies against that which the Th1 side was trying to kill so that when the Th1 side comes in again, they'll be able to kill it. Get it? So normally during a disease process, you have a hyper-TH1 response, a hyper-TH2 response, a hyper-TH1 response, and you go back to health. So in a response for your for any pathogen let's use lyme disease morelia in this example you're exposed to the pathogen you're exposed to that flu you're exposed to that borrelia immediately so it goes into your body you get a rash whatever so it's in your body it's infecting your bloodstream the borrelia is circulating through the bloodstream as soon as it's at a pathogenetic type uh, of uh, height in its disease, your immune system will fire a response. So and that response is a Th1 response. So you get this hyper Th1 response. It's firing this response. And all these different killer cells are going out into the blood looking for the enemy. We're going to kill it. 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 So it's out there to destroy the enemy. And if it destroys it, it knocks it down, then it goes back into balance, and we have victory. But usually with a virulent bacteria like Borrelia, it can't kill it very easy. So it's firing this TH1 response, and the longer time that it can't kill it, you will fire more, in greater quantity more, of these cytokines, chemokines, white blood cells, macrophages. So you get this hyper Th1 response. This is when the person now, they move from 
immediately after the exposure to uh, the next day they feel sick they got a fever they're in bed what's wrong with me give me some tea and lemon juice and honey i'm sick i must have the flu oh they got diarrhea they got they're throwing up whatever the disease process is taking them down so that is a normal th1 response your body is trying to kill a disease now, in an autoimmune disease, you have this hyper Th1 response followed by a Th2 response that d is still not able to find the disease. So, really, this slide I should have titled it differently. In a, in a normal immune response, you'll have a hyper Th1 response and then followed by a Th2 response also. So, your Th2 response will follow anywhere between 24 to 72 hours later. So your Marine Corps are out there in the field trying to kill this pathogen and for one, two, three, four days, and if it can't adequately kill the pathogen, what your body does is it pulls the Marine Corps off and says, all right, get out of here. You don't even know what you're doing here. You can't find this guy. Let's get the FBI in there to locate who this is. So the FBI, the Th2 B cell response, then fires all those cytokines and chemokines enter the area, and they're looking for the enemy. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Oh, there they are. And it makes an antibody against the enemy. So you make an antibody against the pathogen. It's called an antigen now. So an antigen is anything that the immune system initially fired against. So in this case, Lyme disease. You make an antibody against Lyme disease. It tags the Lyme Borrelia. And then you fire again a Th1 response. And the Th1 response goes, wow, oh, there you are. I can see it. There, I can see it perfectly. It's tagged with that fluorescent tape. And we can kill it. That's a normal response, and you get healthy. So this is where, in, uh, if you're not autoimmune yet, taking echinacea and cat's claw and, and vitamin C and such can be very helpful. But in an autoimmune disease, a person has fired this Th1, Th2, Th1 response multiple times. So we've gone weeks, months, maybe years of firing this Th1, Th2, Th1 response. And the reason an autoimmune disease occurs is that when the Th2 response fires, it can't find the enemy. So remember, in a normal immune response, the Th1 response fires. If it can't kill it, it's a really nasty vi virus or bacteria. It fires, hyper fires. That's when you get a fever and you feel sick. It still can't kill it after a couple of days. It suppresses and your Th2 response fires. It goes in there and tags the enemy. It suppresses. The Th1 response fires. It kills the enemy. Everything goes back to normal. Everything goes back to balance. You go back to work. In an autoimmune disease, same thing happens. Th1 response fires. It can't kill it. Hyper fires. You feel sick. Th2 response fires. Th1 suppresses. Th2 response goes in to find the enemies, but they're not there. Hence, this what happens with Lyme disease. Now, this could happen and they're not there, and it just suppresses in your Th1 response fires. And this goes on through cycles. But at some point in time, with every person with an autoimmune disorder, this cycle happened. And at some point in time, when the Th2 response fired, it couldn't find the enemy, and it knew it was right around that thyroid gland, or it knew it was in the brain, and it knew it was near those neurons. So it started creating antibodies to those neurons, to those glial cells that are covering the, the, um, the neuron that is called the myelin sheath. Started to create antibodies to the astrocytes. Started creating antibodies to the thyroid cells. Started creating antibodies to your own fat cells, to your own skin cells, to your own liver cells. So an autoimmune disease is when you've reached that point, when your Th2 response started creating antibodies to what your own cells. By definition, you have an autoimmune disease. Got that? Let's review. 
You read up, what is an autoimmune disease? Well, it's when my body is killing my own tissue. Well, let's define that. It's really not. It's when my Th1 side or my Th2 side is hyperine firing and killing my own tissue. Because at one point in time, there was a pathogen there in that area that my Th2 side could not fire. So it started to create antibodies against my own cells. Hence, this is why when a person has an autoimmune disease of whatever, I had radons when I was a child, and I had these rashes on my uh, face, this rosacea, autoimmune disease, and radons in my arms, and now I have lupus. I had uh, w w thyroid issues, you know, and I've had them for years, and now I have rheumatoid arthritis. Because the antigen was never found, was never dealt with, you only treated the symptoms, and pretty soon, as the antigen migrated to other areas, you actually created antibodies against tissue where it migrated to. Got this? I know this is kind of confusing if you've never heard this before. But an autoimmune disease is when a person is stuck in a hyperdominant Th1 or a hyperdominant Th2 response because it is, continues to fire against self tissue. And why? Because there was an antigen there at one point in time, and it's hiding in the cells. So with autoimmune Lyme, the Lyme disease entered the person's body. It was in the acute phase. It entered the person's cells. Inside the cells, it moved into the chronic phase. When you fire a Th1, Th2 response over time, back and forth, back and forth, and the Th2 response is unable to find the antigen, it can start creating antibodies against your own tissue. That is the autoimmune phase. So phase three of chronic Lyme is when your body is making antibodies against your own tissue, that every time your immune system fires, you're destroying your own tissue. That's why in a Th1 dominant patients, people, whether it's Lyme or whatever, Th dominant autoimmune patients cannot take Th1 stimulants. You are just arming the side of your immune system that is killing your own cells. You can't take an echinacea, you can't take cat's claw, vitamin C, or any of those Th1 stimulants. So you have to find alternate ways to treat the disease. And this is where many, many, many chronic Lyme sufferers are. They don't get this piece. Their doctor doesn't understand immunology, and they're lost here. So their doctor is, well, we'll try cat's claw for a while, and it makes them feel better for a period of time, and then they absolutely crash. Oh, we're going to try this, and we're going to try this new herb. We're going to try this the Chinese herb. We're going to try this. And all of them are Th1 stimulators, so it'll make them feel better for a little bit sometimes. Sometimes it'll just cause them to crash right away, and then they will eventually crash because you'll start just you might help kill the Lyme, but you are going to kill your own tissue. So you're never going to win that battle. So you cannot treat a person that's in phase 3 autoimmune Lyme with immune stimulants. You have to kill it another way. So that's where, well, should I just go on long-term antibiotics? Well, that's a possibility. But there's so much damaging effects of that, I don't ever suggest that. So it's a possibility. Can you use things like MMS? We'll talk about this in detail later. Or anything that's a non-TH1 stimulant. Yes, you have to. So there's we test people out. So we're very specific when we take on a chronic Lyme patient. What is it that is going to work for that patient? Quite honestly, probably half of our autoimmune Lyme patients are on nothing. So MMS is a supplement that might work. There's other protocols that might work. We use energy medicine. So that is a big piece of our protocol that somebody is a Th1 dominant biotoxin, Lyme or mold or something else. You can't use Th1 stimulants. So we use energy medicine in our office, and the machine that we use is the True Rife. So the True Rife, there's other Rife machines out there, but the True Rife I found to be the best. That's what I like the best. I've been doing the Rife machine for years and years, and that's my favorite. Uh, type of Rife machine. 
Uh, so that's what we use. And we'll get into that, what the rifle machine is, at further discussion later. But you have to kill it directly without stimulating an immune response. We also use different brain therapies because, well, what we found in most Lyme patients, in most autoimmune Lyme patients, they're developed antibodies against their own uh, different brain cells. Uh, and we see that, that, that most of these people suffer from brain fog and symptoms of neurological um, disabilities. So in, in most of the situations, it's, uh, their immune system is fired against what are called your glial cells. You have two main different types of cells in your brain, the neurons that carry information and the glial cells that do less information carrying and more support to the neurons. There's a lot of things that they do sell that they do do, but these glial cells um, are separated in different types of glial cells, and um, uh, there's usually an inflammation attack on the glial cells. That's exactly what's taking place with MS and ALS. Okay, so the take-home of this, again, is treat acute phase Lyme with antibiotics as soon as possible. If you know that you're not yet in the autoimmune phase, you may try to use immune stimulants. If you use immune stimulants uh, and the use of immune stimulants has not solved your problem uh, or it makes you worse, makes you feel worse after a period of time, you are most likely in the autoimmune phase. Uh, or if your disease process is quite aggressive, you're probably in the autoimmune phase. Or if you have taken Th1 stimulants and they make you feel worse, you're probably in the autoimmune phase. That's one of the ways that you can kind of tell at home if you're in the autoimmune phase. I take garlic and I feel horrible. <clears throat> then, you know, you're in the autoimmune phase. It might make you feel better for a little bit, but you just never seem to get better. So if you are in phase three, autoimmune Lyme, Feel free to call our office. Find somebody who really understands autoimmune disease and knows how to treat it. All right. I hope you learned a lot. If this is all a uh, review, that's great. If this is all new to you, listen to it a couple times. Dr. Connors, I'll talk to you soon.